Today, we get an unflinching and unflattering portrait of humans at our dastardly worst. Human fickleness is on full display. How easily we are swayed, how fast our loyalties realign. The posturing, the politics, the machinations, we see the power grabs and the cowardice that that same grasping wants to cover over. The thin veil of our desire to control laid unconvincingly over our fears. And did you notice, it's not a story of darkness. Everything happens at a festival in the blazing light of day. We are playing our parts in public then and now. Though we're out in the open, we're still showing what we usually try to keep hidden. We're bringing out from underneath the jealousy and the lazy bigotry and parading it around just on the heels of parading our hope and courage. And after we committed or with our complicity allowed this unjust execution, we wrote the story down. At best, a story of our looking the other way, but more accurately, of our own shouting with the easy, cheap, crowd-pleasing chants, like we are picnickers at a lynching. Today reminds me of turning over a rock or a fallen log and seeing all the creepy crawly things that come out from underneath. The unseen tunneling revealed, the rot and the decay brought up. It was always there, but we don't always see it. And I like to pretend that it's not inside me too. We like to pretend like this is an old story but it's just as much a story of today. Didn't you and I just call out to crucify him? This isn't a story about some other people. This is a story about all of us. It is also, of course, a story about God. Please help me to get down under things and find where you are. So prayed Flannery O'Connor. Please help me to get down under things and find where you are. This is hard. How do we look at that upturned inside out world full of broken shards and violence and find God? How do we see the brutality and the bruising and also see God. Then and now, how do we look closely at the rot and the worming ways and believe that God is woven in there too? Certainly, God is not there blessing the worst of our impulses. And as I've said before, I do not truck in the theory that God is there demanding a sacrifice of blood to be satiated or appeased. So how then? How is God there? How is God here in our mess of a world? How do we find God down under these things? I have only a few hints and guesses about this mystery. But for me, it starts with remembering that what looks like a mess of decomposing muck under that upturned old log is a source of nutrition and growth. Just because I judge something as ugly and perishing doesn't mean it actually is. Gardeners and forest dwellers actually thrive on that stuff that I don't want to get too close to. Which is to say that often the story that I can see isn't the story that everyone else sees. And the story that we can see is almost never the story that God sees. Our vision is so weak and unimaginative, whereas the vast 
and wild dreams of God are incomprehensible to us simply because of their scale, not to mention for their genius. It's also true that if God is not somehow present in the hearts of those connivers, <clears throat> I mean, we connivers, then how are these places ever going to change and be redeemed? Somehow. While God is not approving the plotting, nor lifting the hands of the abusers, God does infuse and dwell in every particle of this whole blamed world, or all is lost. It's like Eileen Jewell sings, that's where I'm going. God traffics and travels through our cowardice and our laziness, through our distrust and cruelty, through our avoidance and fear, knowing and seeing and offering a generous mercy to every bit of it. Or those places stay broken and unredeemed. God then is just as real in the hearts, minds, and bodies of my enemies, of the crooked politicians then and now, and the fickle easily swayed crowd and our congregation. Imagine the people you struggle to see God's image in. Call to mind the places in your own heart that you think are unreachable. God is down under there, too. I'll be the first to admit that this is not always convincing. It doesn't make sense, and it doesn't feel like enough some days, and rather than sounding like a comfort, this can sound wrong and backward. Sensing beauty in the upturned, overturned chaos is really hard work. Glimpsing holiness not as approbation, nor seeing destruction as God's implement, yet believing that God abides in every moment and every life, this is not intro-level work. Maybe that's why we keep telling the stories over and over again. Maybe that's why we're asked to show up Thursday night for a dinner with friends and failures, to show up Friday and look at the body that we will break to gather on Saturday night to hear the long, long story of God's presence in the forgotten corners and quarters. It's all practice for living today in this broken, bruising, violent world. Any week in the news could be Holy Week. Any week in the news, we are just as likely to see the dastardly worst of ourselves on display in the larger machinations of our politics, in the crush of public and private cruelties. We must learn to look directly at these things, not to look away, and to find even there in the hurt and the meanness, God present in the scrum, we learn in this journey of Holy Week to confront our ugly insides and to repent. Rather than pointing the finger at others from long ago or scapegoating whoever they might be today. This is how life and beauty are born in the decomposing underside. When we do the hard, heart-expanding work of paying attention to the whole terrible story believing or learning to believe or trying to believe that God is embedded in it all. Mercy and forgiveness are most needed where we are most broken, and that's where God is going. We don't like going there, or at least I don't. I shouldn't speak for all of you. Looking at the horror and the hurt is not for the faint of heart. 
But this is a day and a week or just another day and just another week for digging down into the muck. This is a time to practice believing hard things. And so, a simple prayer. Please help me to get down under things and find where you are. 